Ok, so you're thinking about creating a modern, trendy opener? Well, you came to the right place! Hello everyone, Alexander from the secondunit.net here and today it's time for another amazing tutorial about creating some trendy, modern opener inside the After Effects. So, this is the animation we'll be creating today. So today we are going to learn how to create this modern stomp opener inside the After Effects from scratch. Again, this is going to be a fast, straightforward tutorial and you should be aware that this is a tutorial for medium knowledge users with the After Effects. So I will not spend too much time explaining some basic stuff, rather than that I will focus just on the process of creation and try to keep this clean, simple and fast. We will create this entire opener just with the basic After Effects plugins, plus Chevco in particular, which will be used in the last part of this tutorial for creating additional particles for our project scenes. By following this tutorial from start to the end, you can learn how to use masks along the positioning layer in 3D space to get more three-dimensional look of the final video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Ok, let's create new composition with the name Parallax Opener. Full HD, 12 second length. Ok, so now we will import the files. Let's select all the files and let's import them inside this project. Let's create folder, images, Control D to duplicate. Comps, duplicate again, change, files, here, ok, so another duplicate, render comps, and now let's duplicate and create another folder, don't touch, and let's select all the images and place them inside the image folder and comps and images place inside don't touch another folder sounds inside don't touch and place the sound inside the sound so we have a range of structure for this project let's create another composition slide one Ok, so let's open the slide 1 and let's select one image and let's drag and drop this image inside the timeline for this composition and let's scale it down. Now let's select the slide 1 composition and let's pre-comp this composition and let's rename it slide one scene so let's create mask and control duplicate the mask and let's scale the mask down and then We should use the subtract mode. So now we have only the space between two masks selected. So let's duplicate. And let's delete. Duplicate. Double click. And then scale it down. And then change the mode for the mask to subtract again the same procedure. So let's create another one. Delete. Duplicate. Resize.
and change the mode to subtract again. So let's create another one. And let's duplicate final mask, delete, and change the mode to add. Okay, let's select all of the layers and let's add the new camera to this. And let's leave the focal length to 28 millimeters. Let's create null object. And let's rename it to the cam control. Okay, let's turn this into the 3D layer. And now let's parent the camera to the this camera control null. Let's select and change the window to the two views. Let's select all these layers and let's move them. like this and let's scale them like this so from the camera perspective we still see the same image as before so let's deselect one and let's move them closer to the camera and let's scale them again so again we have the same perspective view from the camera now let's select only two of bottom layers and let's move them and scale them again something like this so let's repeat the same procedure again for this one let's select this layer and move this layer slightly forward and then let's scale it down Now select everything, double hit M key to reveal all the mask option and let's select mask expansion for the second mask for every layer. And let's reduce mask expansion to minus 30. Okay, something like this. Now, let's create another composition with the name text1 and let's select the text tool and type simple text, simple dot align this text to the middle of the composition. Let's animate this text. Let's animate the scale for the text. Add key for the range selector. Then let's add another key. And now let's just scale down the value to zero for the scale, something like this. Okay, now let's just select both of these keys and let's just time reverse them. So we have something like this. Okay. So now let's select them and control C to copy 
and let's do control V to paste and then time reverts selected keyframes. So now let's drag and drop text one into the slide one scene. Let's turn this layer into the 3D layer. Let's select two views and let's move the text layer slightly to the camera and let's scale it down. So now let's animate the camera. We will animate the camera by animating the camera control layer. First, let's hit R key. And let's add the key to rotation. And now let's hit P to reveal the position. And let's set the key for that. And now hit U. And let's select these keys and position them something like this. and go to the beginning of the timeline and let's now rotate camera control and now let's move z axis for the position something like this and now let's select this layer and add some effect motion tile so let's select mirror edges and now just increase the edges for this layer now we have some 3d look for this slide okay looking nice now let's select all these keys for the camera and let's Let's just increase the camera position movement and rotate slightly more, something like this maybe. And now let's select the keys again and let's keep frame assistant easy ease. And let's change the speed for the selected keys. Something like this. Okay, so look nice. Let's continue. Now, let's move these keys to the one second. Let's add some keys. And on the 210, let's add some movement for the camera control so the camera will rotate and go into the scene and stay there for the for the split of the second and after that again rotate and move away from the scene something like this and now let's check the speed for these selected keys let's slightly move these final keys okay looking nice so let's go to the main composition So let's drop slide one scene. Let's reveal the audio waveform for the sound. So let's add a marker from the end of the scene one. So let's duplicate slide one scene and let's rename it slide two scene. So let's open it. Duplicate text one and select text one and drag and drop by holding the alt key now select all the layers inside duplicate the slide to slide two and now replace it holding the alt key again and open the slide two so you change by replacing the image with the another image 
let's scale it up a little bit and now let's close this now open the text and let's change the text for the slide too easy okay Let's change the color to maybe some orange, for example, something like this. Okay, let's close everything. And now let's select slide one and slide two and place them into the comps. Let's sound put in the don't touch. So let's select slide 2 and drag and drop it on the timeline. Let's position it on 2 seconds. Now let's add time remapping for the slide 1. And let's add the key. On that place and then move it on the two seconds so entire slide one will be ended and two seconds and after that from that point we'll be working with the slide two let's the camera in and out for this slide so it look more random so the camera doesn't repeat the same behavior as the camera in the first slide And now let's find the end point for the slide 2. Go to the time, enable time remap and add the key to this point as well. Now let's move to the 4 second and then move that key. So now entire slide 2 goes from 2 to the 4 second. Now we have two compositions. At this point, let's save the file. Parallax opener. OK. And now let's see what we got so far. Let's reduce the preview to the half and let's see what we have so far. OK looking nice so let's select both of these composition duplicate move them on the top and let's move back on the timeline now let's slightly adjust the position for the end keys of these compositions so they perfectly fit the music Let's duplicate scene one one more time. Let's put it on the top and move it on the end of the timeline. Let's move the key and key for this. Okay, let's select slide two and now duplicate slide two to slide three. Slide 4, slide 5. So now let's select the layers on the timeline. Hold Alt and drag and drop the comps from the project window so we can replace them on the timeline. So let's open now these three slides by double clicking. Let's duplicate change file here to the slide 3, 4, 5 and let's replace the layers also holding the Alt key. For that, select everything, hold the Alt key and just drag and replace. OK, now let's duplicate the text also. So we are quickly 
creating the content for the all the five slides. So we are replacing the layers and creating new layers. So text four and now text five. Okay, let's move forward. Now we will close everything and let's select text three to the text five and let's open them. And now let's change the text. Rename this to the fast. Okay, let's change another color. Now let's go to the another layer, text four, and let's change this to positive and the color to green and text five. Select and change the text five to beautiful. Okay. Let's change the color also. Now close everything. And let's select slide three, four and five. Double click to open them. Let's select the image and drag and drop it by holding the Alt key. Go to the slide four and do the same. Let's scale the slide four quickly. Something like this to for the image to fit the composition. And now let's image in the slide five. Okay. Okay, let's scale down this in slide three. And now close everything. And let's see what we have so far. Okay, it's look nice, but the camera movement is a little bit repetitive. So we have to make the camera movement more random. So we will go inside the slide three and let's adjust camera and create unique position for the camera in the slide three. Let's go to the slide four. And again, let's create unique in and out for the camera. So just change the position for the in and out keys for this camera to make them more unique. And let's open the slide five, last composition. Let's do the same inside this composition. Let's find something that looks nice for this, something like this maybe and okay. And let's go to the end and now let's see what we have. Okay, nice. It doesn't look so repetitive anymore. So let's add another adjustment layer and let's name it glow. So let's, let's cut the length for this layer, hold alt and bracket for this and Now let's add some effects. Let's go to the first, let's go to the color corrections, exposure, and let's add some blur, fast box blur. So repeat edge pixel for the blur. And let's add some keys for both of these effects. And let's move the keys on the beginning and let's copy them and move them to the end of this layer. And now let's add some 
exposure and fast boot in the middle. Let's duplicate this layer and let's move them to the next transition between the slides. Let's duplicate again and let's move it. So let's create another transition for the another two slides. And that's it. Let's create another composition with 300 by 300 pixels and let's name it Particles 1. Now let's create something with the Shape tool. Let's duplicate. Let's add a key for the scale by clicking the S on the keyboard. And let's move the key. And now let's get back and add the 100 to the second key. Add key to rotation. And then add 90 degrees. New adjustment layer. And let's name it transition. And after that, let's go to the effect control for this and transition and the sheen blinds. So let's rotate. Set transition to 15. Let's hit U to reveal all the keys. And now go to the keyframe assistant, easy ease. And let's select and adjust the speed for this. Let's select everything and pre-comp. OK. Go to the time, enable time remapping and then add a key. And go to the two seconds, add another key. And then on the three second, let's control C, control V to copy paste first frame. Okay, let's duplicate these particles one. And now let's create another shape. It will be circle. Let's animate this. Hit S to reveal the scale. Add the key and let's Scale to zero. Let's turn off the fill and let's add the stroke for this. So we have all, only the stroke for this layer and let's add white color. Something like this, and we have animation now. And go key assistant, easy. easy. Let's change the speed value for these keys. And 
and let's animate thickness. So you have something like this. Okay, looking nice. Let's recompose this. Particles to nested. Let's go to the new solid and add particles. So let's add these two particle composition to the single composition. And let's rename this composition to the particles texture. Okay. And let's close everything else. Let's drag and drop the particle texture and turn it off. Select solo these particles so we can see just that layer and let's add a particular layer. Let's change the emitter type to box. Let's turn off the velocity and let's change the pre-run to 70. Let's animate the particles per second. On the next frame, we will change particle per second to zero. And let's change emitter size. Let's go to the particles type to sprite. And let's choose particle texture for the layer. Now let's size, size it up like this and let's size random. And we have something like this. Okay. Of course we can change the colors for the particles, but I will leave this to white for now and let's see how it looks. All together with this slide so we can add just a little bit rotation for these particles so let's find rotation random rotation so all the particles will randomly rotate now select particles and particle texture and control c to copy and let's open all five slides control v to paste Control V to paste and paste again. So we paste this in all five slides. And now let's slightly adjust the particles, particle texture, because by importing the particles to the another composition, the particles lose its source. So let's add new adjustment layer and let's rename it to the adjust. It's a general adjust for the composition. So let's add some effects. First, let's add tint and let's reduce the tint to maybe something about 15. And let's change the color to something more bluish like this. And now let's go to the color correction curves and let's increase the contrast slightly like this. And let's go to the add sharpen. And after that, go to the noise and grain and add grain. Final output, Kodak. 
and intensity 0 04. So yeah, add some noise. And that is it. And that's it. Hopefully you learned something useful from this tutorial. I will include the project files for this tutorial so you can use them to practice. You can find the link below in the description. All you have to do is visit secondunit.net and download the project files on tutorial page. I hope this video helped you in some way or the other. If it did, make sure you give us a like. And don't forget to subscribe and ring a bell so that you might get any future tips, tricks or tutorials. Feel free to leave a comment with a suggestion what would be the next thing that you would like for me to cover. Also, you can find me at the Patreon and join the community of the nice, amazing people that support in this channel, helping keep this channel free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching. I see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.